he loves us to life. He loves us until we change. He doesn't get tired. I was preaching one time many years ago. I said, God gets tired. And God said, no, I didn't get tired. You tired, you know. <laughs> cannot say everything you feel like saying. There are times you have to learn to hold your peace for love's sake. Are you hear what I'm saying? Because of God in you and God in me. It's a learning process. It's a growing process, brother, sister. But that's what we're made of. And I want to emphasize that that's we're born of God. We're born of God. It ain't something that we have to try to manufacture. We've been born of that spirit. And that spirit is the spirit of Christ. So he's in us to make us better. He's in us to give us more insight. He's in us to forgive us, to help us get there. So as I, I was looking at that, then he said, verse 10, that you may approve things that are excellent, that you may be sincere and without offense till the day of Christ. Well, we talked about that before. You know what that word means. Love is our purpose. As I was reading this year, three things came to me. I believe that uh, he was saying. Love must be sincere. That's one. What do you mean sincere? Pure. Unmixed. No pretending, right? No dis disguising. But sincere. It's not real love if it's not, right? If, it, if, it, if it's, it's, it's with the wrong motives and mix. So if Jesus, his motives are so pure. He is truth. So what he intended to do, everything that he does to us and for us is all pure. All pure. There's no ill motives behind it to save us, to heal us, to make us whole. So his, his, his doing is to make us more like him, Right? That's, that's the goal, to become more and more like Jesus, right? And uh, so it's going gonna, it's gonna to be to help his kingdom, to help other peoples to see what God is like. They've never seen God. They heard people talk about God, but they don't know what God is like. And the only models that he have down here is Christians. He doesn't have any more models. So when we're in our workplace, maybe somebody, somebody could be, and, and I can assure you, if you're a true Christian, people are watching you everywhere you go. On your job, people are watching you. They may never tell you, but they're watching you. And I've had people tell me that all through my life. I've been watching you. I heard people say, I'm watching this year. Watch your daughters. I watch them. You know, years ago, people said, watch them. Because they want to see a good example. They want to know that this thing can truly be lived. They want to know, hallelujah, that it's not a fake and a phony. They're looking for genuine people. Young people are looking for what's real. You know, they've seen the phony, but they want to know what's real and genuine. And so God is working on it. Look at somebody say, he's working on me too. Yeah, so I, I say, I know he's working on me. I, I mean, that's no big secret. <laughs> but, I, but I'm all right with that. Hallelujah. I'm all right with that. So love must be sincere. Not pretending. Not self-centered. Yes. Yes. Loving God's way. Sincere. Pure. No hidden motive. Well, I'm going to love her. Maybe she'll keep my children, you know. I... No. Love her because she needs to be loved. Isn't that right? Amen. Hallelujah. Now, if anybody's like that, I, I just said it. I don't know nothing about nothing. Just... <laughs> 
So love must be sensitive. Second thing is love must mature. It's got to be a growing kind of thing in love, right? And I believe we're all growing, but uh, uh, some at a different rate, but love must mature. That's what I believe him saying. In mature in insight and in judgment. Not judging after the appearance, you know. It's just like something that we have to grow to, you know. What, what something sound like. Uh, you heard him say, if it looked like a duck and sound like a duck, then it is a duck. May not necessarily. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because we don't know the inner qualities of a human life. Only Jesus does. Only he does. A person can be looking at, at listen to me. A person can be looking out the window when I'm preaching, and I can look at that person and say, they ain't interested in what I'm saying. But they can be in such a meditative thought. They may have heard something that was said, and they just took them back, and they're just sitting there thinking. But I don't know their inner qualities. And the safest thing for me is to not judge them. Is this happening to anybody? The safest thing is to not judge. But Jesus said, judge not that you be not judged. Because with what judgment you judge, if it's partial, that's how you're going to be judged. How many want somebody to judge us partially? I don't want people to look at me and judge me partially. I, I would rather that they get some discernment. Ain't that right? Say, well, Lord, what's that man of God like? What is he, what is he like in his home? What is he like in his personal time? And then I'm all right because God's going to tell you the truth. But if they look and say, I heard this about that man of God. And it's nothing but a lie from somebody that was mad. I don't want people to judge me with a partial judgment. And you don't either. Isn't that right? So he said, don't you judge so that you will not be judged with the same fragmented partial judgment that you judge somebody. Okay, okay, Larry. Okay, okay. It's, it's something to help us, brothers and sisters. You know, see, we're creatures of habit. Many times people out of their pain for years have done this. And they learn to cope that way. To keep their sanity. By doing wrong and thinking wrong and talking wrong. And so when we come to the kingdom, we're all messed up. Now, I ain't talking about nobody. Listen, please. I'm just preaching. I ain't talking about nobody. I'm just preaching. So God knows that we're messed up, but he takes us just like we are. And he loves us to life. He loves us until we change. He doesn't get tired. I was preaching one time many years ago. I said, God gets tired. And God says, no, I didn't get tired. You tired, you know. <laughs> so I don't say that no more. I, I don't preach like that no more. So I was young. I was a little bit dumb, a little bit stupid in that. So I don't preach like that no more. I don't go around and tell them, God's tired. <laughs> Okay, all right. <laughs> Remember one time I said, God is angry. And God got back home and God says, I'm not angry with these people. I said, oh, yay. <laughs> I thought you were. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> I remember God told me one time, he said, I said, God, I'm on TV now. What do you want me to say to these people? God said, tell them that I love them and that I'm not angry with them. I was like, wow, this is too easy, you know. <laughs> but God wants us to know how he is. Isn't that right? Yeah. God is different. Yeah. He's different. Hallelujah. And he loves us. He knows our frailties. Hallelujah. And so love must mature. Not envious or jealous, Right? Discern an inequality. We love must mature to the point where we can discern inequality. We don't judge no longer after what we see or hear. But we pray about it and God gives us the insight, right? And love is sacrificial, right? We do sometimes we have to sacrifice, you know. Love is, you know, it's 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 that. It's these qualities that God developed in us because He's in us. But the way He is, sometimes we're not that way. And so there's a conflict 
God is in us, but he can't really do like he want to do all the time because we're different, right? So what he's saying is that the more I, we educate ourselves as to who God is and, and learn to yield to God, the more he can get more substance out of our lives now because now we're jailing, we're cooperating with him more and more and more. And then our lives just take on. And everywhere you go, you're just blessing somebody. You're being fruitful. Why? Because what you're doing now is you're agreeing more with God. God's already that way. Isn't that right? He doesn't need any, any improvement. His his spirit is perfect, but we're not. And so it's learning to grow, learning to learn to cooperate more with God. If God says go to the right, then we learn to go to the right. Isn't that right? If he said go to the left, then we go to the left. We're cooperating with God. It is the spirit of life that is in us. He is magnificent. He is wonderful. And he's here to do us every bit good boy when I found out that God wasn't thinking about me the way I thought about myself or the way I thought that he was thinking about me that brought so much relief to me the devil was telling me big time and feeding me for a long time that God is this way and God is that way but when God finally got to me I'm not that way at all I'm not that way and uh, so it gave me some great incentive to get to know him more. Love must be sincere, love must mature, and then love is produced by the Spirit. He says, verse 11, being filled with the fruits of righteousness, which are by Jesus Christ, to the glory and praise of God. Galatians 5.22 says, the fruit of the Spirit is love, right? Joy, peace, long-suffering, goodness, gentleness, meekness, and faith. So the whole idea is this year. When I draw closer to God, I start to take on more of the characteristics of God because I hang around them all the time. Have you ever noticed when you, you hang around a person a lot, you start to take on certain characteristics? A young man can be a bad guy. And another guy can be a good guy, but if that good guy hang around that bad guy long, then and all of a sudden the bad guy cursed, and the young the good guy didn't curse, but after a while he start cursing. And one day he get around his mom and may slip out. Isn't that right? So when he curses, like oh, oh, you know. But what happened? That association brought on assimilation, right? Same way with God. When you hang around Jesus, his word, his prayer, hang around the saints that truly sincere with the Lord and you, they, they help you, they begin to talk to you. Say, son, son, don't, don't talk like that. Don't say that. Just pray for him. You know, the, the, the good characteristics rub off on you. You know what I'm saying? And so we're here to help one another. And uh, so uh, this is growth we're talking about. We're talking growth now because God, everybody must grow, right? We all are growing, some growing faster than others, right? But growth is the key. And so we keep on growing, and as we grow, we're going to take on that nature that pleases God. God is pleased when we go after him. He's pleased when we want to know more about him. It's the spirit. The spirit has to produce it, you know. And uh, I shared this with you about a, a situation. I was reluctant to say it again, but maybe it makes sense. Love, love is by the spirit. That means... Uh, I had a situation of a good friend of mine. Um, he, I told you this before, that he needed some help. Some other ministers praying for him. And he had called about 10 pastors because he had to go to court. And I was one of those 10. My first natural response was, I don't have time to go to court and then be sitting outside praying. No, I don't think so. So, I wasn't as close to him as I was later. So, in my mind, I didn't say anything to him. I was not even going to respond. This was me. Look at somebody said, that's you. And so, the man was crying out because he was desperate. He had to go to court. And some of the bishops took him to court. And they roasted him. But he needed some prayer outside. I didn't know all that. I didn't, I didn't know the state that the man was in. I didn't know none of that stuff. To be quite honest, I act like I didn't care. But when I, I said, I had a second thought. I says, 
But maybe I'll pray about it anyway. And when I decided to pray about it, God spoke to me. And he let me know that he had called him and also that he had given him the vision. And I was like, what? So my theology was being tampered with now. Because I thought if God gives you a vision, can't nobody stop your vision. So because they had stopped it, I just felt like, well, it must not be from God. So I ain't getting involved. So anyway, when I sought the Lord and God said, these people are hindering my vision that I gave to him. I said, well, wait, 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 wait. You gave him that vision? So then I was like, oh, my God, I didn't know that. Long story short, I decided I was going. I said, I'm going. I didn't want to go, but because God said this vision for him, because I put myself in his place. What if that was me? So I went. And uh, out of ten pastors that he called, not one showed up. Not one took the time to spend an hour or two out there praying for him. That's That's a painful thing. And, and I was just like those. So I'm not trying to make me look good. I was just like them. The only difference was I had a second thought. Let me pray about it. And when I prayed, God showed me his inner qualities. God showed me something about him that I didn't know. What am I trying to say? If I'm going to love, if you're going to love, we have to depend upon the Lord. You cannot love in your strength. You cannot love. You can try to be the nicest person in the world and it won't work. Does that make sense to anybody? It takes Jesus. And that's why he's there to help us. And he will help you to love. He'll help you to forgive. He'll heal you when you need healing. He'll deliver you when you need deliverance. He'll encourage you when you need encouragement. He'll pick you up when you feel down. Hallelujah. He'll do everything that you need. Because he's there to make sure you make it. Hallelujah. Come on, let's give God a praise. Hallelujah. Glory to God. All right, praise God. So I mentioned those those three things. Love must be sincere. Love must mature in love. Love is a product produced by the Spirit. So I asked the Lord, this is in conclusion. I asked the Lord, I said, Lord, how can a person who has a long-standing attitude that's negative, how can they get the help or get rid of it? I said, what, what, what would you recommend? How, how, how do they move from point A to B if it, they've had years of a, a negative attitude? I'm just talking to God. So I waited for a while, and then finally he started talking. He said, one, a person has to recognize that they have an, have an attitude. You know, the alcohol anonymous, when I heard that when people go try to get some help there, and I had one guy that I knew, he went there, and he told me about, he went there, and he said, they tell you, uh, you have to admit that you're an alcoholic. And the first thing he was like, I'm not admitting to that. <laughs> And to admit that I'm an alcoholic is, is to admit that I got a problem. Isn't that right? right. <laughs> so yet he comes there for some help, right? Now how are you going to get <laughs> how you going to get some help and you, you won't admit that you need some help? Yeah. And so he he finally gave in. He said, I'm alcohol- my name is so-and-so and I'm an alcoholic. <laughs> but that was the first step to get help. So the Lord said to me, he said, the first thing is a person has to recognize that they got an attitude. Yeah. It's like the man that was kicking the cat and kicking a hole in the wall. So my, he said, oh, I'm not, mad. I'm not angry. <laughs> but we have to first admit that there's a problem. Yeah. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Yeah. This is what God said, because I'm talking to him out of a sense of heart. He said, God, how can a person move from a real bad negative attitude, headed all their life, da-da-da, and how can, they, how can they really, what would you do? How, how did it happen? And he said, first, I have to recognize that you have an attitude. And then the second thing he said, he says, confess and repent to God once you recognize and accept that you have an attitude. And... Don't rationalize sin. Sin is sin, right? 
Don't, don't make an excuse and say, I, I so and so. Sin is sin. Amen. And so if, if, if I want to get some help, then I got to acknowledge sin for what it is. If my attitude, if I say, oh, ain't nothing wrong with my attitude, I think I'm right. All right. And he said, run it by faith, run it by love, and run it by holiness. Is my attitude, is, is it showing, demonstrating faith? If not, whatever is not a faith, it's sin, right? Run it by love. Is this Christ-like? Then he said, run it by holiness. Is that the separate life? So, and, 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 and so I begin to think about that, okay. And I, I found something in, in, in my life that, that, that I had, uh, you know, I, 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 had, I did not look at it as an attitude. But as I'm listening to God, begin to avail and open myself that, oh, yeah. Yeah, there is something there. But he was ready to, to, to heal. He was so ready to do something. And he's ready the same way. If, 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 I, if we only acknowledge what he already knows, right? And that we really want some help from God. He can get the help. He can do the thing. He can do it, brothers and sisters. So, then the, and then the third thing he says, be willing to change. Now, that's a biggie. Because the will is involved, right? He said, be willing to change. Have you ever? I remember one time asking the Lord. One time, some, some years ago, I was asking the Lord. Uh, I, there, somebody had done something to me, and I, I, I thought I was okay with it. But, uh, and I said, okay, I, I think I need to look at it here. But then God said, no, you need to forgive. I thought, forgive him. I thought, okay. So I began to say, okay, I'm going to forgive him. And when I started saying I'm going to forgive him, all of a sudden some anger began to rise up in me, and I began to tell God every reason for what, what they did. I was like, wait a minute. So that's evident that there is a problem there, right? <laughs> but what I'm saying is that sometimes when you begin to ask God to say forgive, sometimes some anger and stuff like that, some rationale begin to come in. No, 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 he did, da, 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 she did. And, but move on past that. Move on past that. It's getting quiet in here. Move on past that. Be willing to change, he said. And the fourth thing he says, ask and allow God to help you. Now, before I go into the last point, just... I'll tell you about something that God told me. He said, you have a real craving for rich food. I was telling the family not too long ago. And then he said, ask God to help you. So my first thought was, I don't really need, I don't need no help. I can stop this when I want to. But I was wrong. So I went, I set out to just kind of ignore it and just go and say, oh, you know, I'll, I'll just cut back on it. Boy, I started eating more and more. I mean, it got worse. I began to eat more and more, uh, uh, and, and that craving got worse. And finally, after a few weeks, I said, okay, God, I got you. I need some help. I really need your help. And after I confessed and asked him for help, God is my judge. I mean, he cut that thing down to such a minimum. Every now and then, I eat some rich food. But I couldn't do it. I thought I could, but I couldn't. But when he said, ask God to help you. When I asked God to help me, then God helped me. God can do anything, brothers and sisters. God can do anything. And then finally he said, educate yourself in that area. Now, sometimes we need more knowledge and understanding in certain areas where there was a long-standing attitude. So he said, educate yourself. Sometimes you have to educate yourself in those areas. Begin to see the truth about certain things. And, and it'll help, you know. And sometimes when you know truths about certain things, you just can say, oh, wow, I didn't know that. I didn't know that. So educating ourselves sometimes in areas where there's long-standing attitudes and uh, it helps. The idea of light and illumination, the path of the just, more insight and revelation knowledge. God says, I want you to grow. Rich in knowledge and insight, he says. Love sees the fault clearly. And looking them over, I'm sorry, overlooking them to the heart of things and continue to love. Love speaks the truth that healing and change may occur. From milk to solid food, able to discern good from evil, faculties trained to discern, 
a quality of judgment, a sharpness of perception, like the art credit, you know. God wants us to grow, to be tuned in with God and penetrating intuition that has been practiced, cultivated, and disciplined. We begin to know how to use the gifts of the Spirit, discernment, word of knowledge, and word of wisdom to help us in our lives and become more Christ-like. That's the goal, to become more Christ-like. Christ is in us of a truth, and he is moving, working to help us to become more like him. And he will not stop that process. He will continue that so that in the day of God, we can stand before God, not guilty, not feeling any kind of sense of condemnation, none of that stuff. We've allowed him to minister his grace and his healing love to us. Oh, what a joyous ride. What a wonderful thing about God is so God's love is so wonderful being filled with the fruits of righteousness that's God's will for you and I come on let's give him a praise hallelujah hallelujah Jesus glory to God hallelujah glory to God hallelujah Jesus he's a wonderful God that's his will for you and I I can with the help of God I can with the help of God God in me God in you the hope of glory hallelujah hallelujah father in Jesus name I thank you I bless you and I magnify you I am certain Lord God that I stand in need of growth development according to your word more and more insight and I believe also your people Lord stand in need of growth when we are growing in Lord God, but you want us to stay focused, hallelujah, and begin to embrace the things uh, that are essential for growth, Lord God, and, uh, and to put off the vices that interferes with growth, Lord, uh, the malice and all of these uh, envies and jealousies that gets in the way, Lord, that hinders, Father. I thank you right now, and I bless you and I magnify your name I am so glad you're not tired of working with us I am so glad that you are faithful I am so glad Lord God that you're long suffering to all of us Lord God not willing that any should perish and I thank you you loved us when we were enemies and how much more do you love us now when we're your children somebody give him praise hallelujah <laughs> glory to God Glory to God. Hallelujah, Jesus.